Oh, I have to click continue. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Samantha Dion Baker, and I'm in my studio in Brooklyn right now. And I'm so happy to be teaching this class. This actually, the idea came the last Michael's class that I taught with Derwent. Um, somebody, I think, in the comments said, I, or I had mentioned, you know, when you're addressing envelopes, you can use your handwriting in playful ways. Because I was doing a, the class on playful lettering using your natural handwriting. And somebody said, Can you show that? And then all of a sudden I realized that would be a great class. So, and coincidentally, April is National Letter Writers Month, apparently. Um, and I, I didn't, that was not planned. So it's a great month to be doing this, especially on the second day of the month. So you all can sort of research that. I don't really know what it means. I guess it means you write a lot of letters <laughs> um, and just have fun with it. But yeah, I, I have so much to share today. So much to share. I didn't even realize how much I would have to share on this topic until this whole idea started. And I've just been, I've been having so much fun thinking of all the different things that I can share with you guys today. So um, I think we'll, we'll switch over right now. Yeah, to my desk and I'll get started. So, okay. So the first thing I wanna share is just some mail art that I have received that is amazing. This is drawn, that's, that's an illustration. Isn't that incredible? So these are some of the letters that I've received. I have one very close friend who is my like biggest pen pal and she does these amazing, Rhea, I don't know if Rhea's here, but I hope she's here, but I don't know if she's here. Um, anyway, I can't really look to see if she is, but Rhea, if you're here, hi. And she, like these, these envelopes are made out of scrap. I, you know, I, I work right near the Manhattan Bridge. So she like made this envelope. I'm gonna make an envelope with you today. Um, it's just, I'm just gonna flip through these. I have so much more, but, oh, this is, I paint on leaves. If anybody here knows that, it, I don't share it too often um, these days, but this, this uh, friend sent me um, a, a letter with, with leaves that look like my, the leaves that I paint on. Um, oh, I think I, I shared this one because we're going to talk also about all the things that really, I, and I, and I, I encourage buying stationery to a certain degree, but I also think that you really don't have to. If you buy envelopes or even, as I'm gonna show you, make envelopes, you can use anything to write letters on. And this idea of you know just creative play, upcycling things, this is a coffee cup that my friend Ria uh, wrote, wrote to me, wrote me a letter on. And let's see, how did that fit in the envelope? It's not fitting now, anyway. Um, isn't that cute, the cherries? This one, I mean, some of them, you wonder like if the post is even gonna, if it's even gonna work. And it looks like here, the postman, I don't know if Rhea did this or not, but the postman wrote in the, the address because there's sort of a barcode that, anyway, somehow that made it to me. It's kind of amazing that it did, but, um, and some people might know a little bit more about how that works, but I, as far as I know, the stamps, the stamps, oh, look at this lettering. Isn't that gorgeous? Hold that by hand. Here's another handmade envelope. But the stamp has to go in the upper right corner, the address in sort of this area, and the return address up in the, in the upper left or on the back. So as far as I know, you pretty much have to follow those rules, but a lot of mail still arrives, even if you break the rules a little bit. So these are some of the, these are some, I can't really share the mail that I've created for one reason is because it's gone, it's out of my hands, I've already sent it. But the second reason is that I have to be careful about like, you know, I don't wanna share everybody's, I mean, I doubt anybody here is gonna be weird about it, but you know, I, I wanna keep people, 
um, respect people's privacy. So I'm just gonna flip through these quickly and these are people who gave me permission or I know I can sort of hide <laughs> their address. So this is one I just made and Katie is, should be here and I, she gave me permission. This is a, a pattern I made of spirals and so we can, we can work on one like that together. Um, here's one that I probably shouldn't share, but I have a lot of fun with vintage stamps. And so I can sort of pull out that box and talk about that a little bit. Um, here's another friend. I know nobody's gonna be weird about this, but this one is fun. It's just paint splatters, if you can see that. Um, another one. I have so much fun, just all the different ways that you can play around. This is painted with Derwent paints and then fine line pen for that pattern. Here's another one with white paint and white pen paint splatter. I have a lot of fun with stickers. So I sort of wrap this rainbow sticker around. This um, we can go through together as well which is sort of similar to the, the um, one of the previous ones I showed, the um, sort of background pattern on the light colored envelopes. And this one is um, an example of that idea of upcycling. This is a, one of those mini cereal boxes and I just use it as an envelope. Um, okay, so, other tools that are fun to have if you have if you have them to like seal the back or make fun patterns with if you don't if you aren't comfortable drawing and illustrating and sort of making anything too elaborate you can just have fun with tapes and with stickers these are some of my stickers you can seal the back with these stickers um, and then just these classic little rainbow stickers and yeah there's 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 so much you can you can do. So I have a few that I have started and I have a few tricks that I want to share. This is um, an airmail envelope that this trick works really well with. Um, not all envelopes are going to work, but I have a guide. These are as a, a, just four lines that I created on a scrap piece of paper. That you can actually stick inside the envelope. If you want a guide. You see how that shows through, so that you know your um, lines and, and lettering will be straight. So that's one trick. Actually, I'll leave that one in there. Maybe I'll use it to address. And you can line it up anywhere you want. So that it's in the right position. And then that way it's kind of fun. You don't really have to use your pencil to plan. Um, let's see. This, this envelope that I will letter on, I, I have a little bit of a plan there. This was just a piece of paper that I did some brush strokes on just some light brush strokes, filled the whole piece of paper, and then I made the envelope. It's so easy. I am going to show you soon. And then I'm just gonna write the letter on one of those cereal boxes. Okay. So I think what I'll do is I'll show you how to make the envelope and then I'll have the three or four, actually I'm gonna have, I have five ready to go that we can work on. Um, so hopefully I can get through all of that. Okay. This is a piece of one of my drawings. I just had an extra printout. I never throw these away. It's, my printer's been acting up. So I do, I've been doing a lot of test prints. And so this is just a piece of paper, like a regular kind of crappy piece of just like copy paper that I was doing a test print on. But why throw it away when it be can become an envelope? So 
this is how this works. And it's, it's actually much easier. You can buy, um, or sorry, well, you can buy them, but you can download templates online if this seems intimidating. Um, some things that I sort of find are pretty simple can still be intimidating to people, but just know that once you do it a few times, you will get the hang of it. Um, so what's important is that whatever, um, when you're making an envelope is that you have enough paper to make the flaps. So what you can do is I have this card and I know that it's a smallish card. So eight and a half by 11 is only gonna work for a smallish, a, a small card. It's not gonna be, you know, you need bigger paper for, for, um, for example, this, there wouldn't be enough paper to cover the whole thing. So it's kind of like wrapping a present. Think about it. You need, you need the same amount on each side to cover the whole thing. So I just literally stuck it in the middle, did a little light tracing around it. And then basically you just come in from the corners just a little bit. And what's, what's important is, I mean, sometimes I do this without even making pencil guides, but I know it's, that, you know, you just hold your card there and start start cutting. But I don't know if you can see this. There's the line. And the thing is, you don't want to go right into the corner. You want to leave a little bit of room outside of the corner. And you just trim these corners. So they angle in just a little bit. Kind of like if you think about how an envelope flap would work. I'm rushing through this a little bit because I want to get to the addressing part. I'm sure there are other ways of making envelopes. This is the most basic, but um, it works for me, so. Sides in first. Bottom. And top. And there's your envelope. I can't really put an address on something that has this much color. So then what I'll do is I have a little piece of paper that I've cut that you can glue down with a glue stick to make the address label. So I'm just gonna quickly put this down. And I just sort of eyeball it. So there you go. Stamps, I'm going to add, get, get to quickly because the thing is stamps, I have, an, I have a, a, a collection of stamps. Not everyone's going to have this, but I love old stamps and I love to build on them and make, you know, kind of come up with the right amount. Um, now stamps are forever stamps, so you don't have to worry about this, but it used to be they would come in, you know, a set amount in the United States anyway. And um, then they would go up every year and then you'd have to add to them. So like, for example, this vintage love stamp is 20 cents. So you just have to keep adding to it. Um, so the thing is you wanna have different sizes because for example, this, this letter, if we got, if we had a vertical stamp And this one could, would look fun, but you have to, you know, it's nice to have a selection so that you can find the stamp that fits. So here, I'm going to find one. This is a forever stamp and it will fit in that spot. Yeah. 
Okay. And hey, Samantha? Great... Yes. Samantha, it's Molly. Someone yes. just asked if there's a way to know the value of an old stamp that doesn't state the value on it. And I don't know the answer to that question. Do you know by chance? They always, they always state the value. Okay. Yeah, no, an old, an old stamp, unless it's a forever stamp, they're always going to, that, I mean, that's part of the stamp. So as far as I know, I've never seen a stamp that didn't have the value on it. Sometimes it's small. This one is five cents. Can I, I don't know if everybody can see that. Um, yeah, no, they're, they're, they, they would always have the value on them because that's the whole idea is that you, you know, the, how the postage companies made, made money. And so if you didn't have enough on it, how would you, I don't know. Yeah, it's, as far as I know, they always have the, the amount. Sometimes it's small, that one's also five cents. These, when, when the postage would go up by just a cent or two, you would have to buy these. This is a one cent stamp. Anyway, okay, I don't, I don't wanna to spend too much time doing this, but stamps are fun. I have like a crazy collection. <laughs> Yeah, and Samantha, someone was asking too about, they weren't getting the concept of the envelopes of how to make it. So I just wanted to emphasize that this will be recorded and posted tomorrow. So Samantha is gonna cover a lot of information today or tonight. Um, so feel free to go back and rewatch the video, but we did ask her to move quite quickly so she could cover a lot of content. So thank you everyone for understanding. Yeah, the envelope went quickly and I didn't, I really just sort of did one that's very sort of rudimentary and basic and basically, you know, it's not, it, it doesn't look amazing, but I'm not a perfectionist. So if people are, there are templates you can find online and there's, you know, really precise um, envelope make, making situations. But really what I, what, what I want to encourage, my whole point of this is that anything can become an envelope. You just have to figure out how to make it. And there's no point in throwing away stuff that can be the coolest mail, you know? So it's just, my whole point is for you to rethink throwing things away and how to how you can repurpose things. Magazines, there's so many pages in magazines that you just would recycle, like your New Yorker every week or something. You know, we're constantly throwing that, the, or our newspaper into the recycling bin, but find pages and, and make, make things out of them. It can be mail or, or art or whatever. Um, but since we're talking about mail, make, make mail out of it. So, okay. So yeah, I am rushing through this, but I just wanted to show as much as possible and just, and then get to the like fun creating. So, um, okay. And this one, I did, I did write ahead on it. I, I, um, I think it's fun to use some like colored, these are fine line colored, um, colored pens. So I'm just gonna start to trace. I'm, I will do a few from the start if we have time. This one I did write out ahead of time and it's just in my normal handwriting. So yeah, this is just, it's it, another, the point being that plan ahead, use your pencil, even writing the address can be, think of it, you can think of it as a sketch. And there's nothing, you know, once you go over it again, as long as you're wait for the ink to dry or your paint to dry, you can erase that pencil. But there's nothing worse than like trying to, you know, create a beautiful addressed envelope and you run out of room and you write the name too big and then it gets squeezed in on one side or something like that. You don't, you know, you want to kind of avoid that. So planning ahead with a pencil is perfectly fine. Um, and I encourage it. So I'm just going to start to go over what I wrote here. And I did ask in my stories, I think, as I mentioned, um, for people to give me addresses. So some of the attendees here tonight will be receiving this mail. 
I figured instead of making up addresses, I would ask if people would give me their address so that I could actually put this mail in the mailbox. I have a lot of fun ideas about at the actual letter as well. If, if we have time, we can share. I can talk a little bit about that as well. Um, you can make a scroll where you tape a bunch of pieces of paper together so that when the reader opens it, this is, this is if you want to write a lot. I never really want to write that much. I have more fun creating the, the um, envelope than actually writing the letters. Um, but there was a time where I had time and the desire to write longer letters. So I did scrolls. Um, and you can, you can find little bits of pieces of paper like ephemera or just little things, you know, postcards or things, a business card, anything, and, and then number them. And then pe the reader has to, you know, read all these little little pieces of paper in order. That's kind of fun. One thing I always do is I center this isn't perfectly centered, but I try and center everything and leave out the zip code. So it's always fun to put the zip code at the bottom. Um, it's just sort of like this old school way. You might see like on a wedding invitation, this, this would happen. Um, and you can even like space out those numbers for the zip code. So there's the first, first round on that one. And I just used a fine line red, red pen. And now I'm just gonna erase that pencil. There are so many other things you can do. You can, now I might add like, let's say this is a paint pen. I'm just going over, over this again over my painted pattern. This was a painted piece of paper that I made into an envelope. And I'm just, I'm adding like little, more little dots. You can add flowers, you can add washi tape, uh, all sorts of fun things. Hey Sam, once you yeah. get done, can you hold that up a little closer to the camera so people can see? Yes, thank you. Can you see that well? Yes, that's perfect. Just kind of maybe hold it there just for a couple seconds. No problem. Yeah, no, it's a little bit hard to see. And you can see here, it's not perfect. But there it is. And I, I'll probably run a piece of tape along here. I haven't written my letter yet, so I can't do it now. But you, there's all sorts of fun tapes. You can just use your glue stick. You can use another piece of paper and put something down um, to glue it. And, you, and, and like I said before, you can just find like, I don't know, just have fun. I mean, it's, that's a good excuse to have fun with your stickers. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, and the return address. I think for this one, I'm not gonna write my address here. I'll probably, I have, I have, um, I can just write it here also, but I have little stickers and I also have a stamp, a rubber stamp. So, I, you know, not everybody's gonna have that, but it's nice to set, you know, sort of make that choice whether you wanna have the return address on that front side or on the back. And I think for this one, I'm not gonna, I like the way that looks, so. Okay, um, for this one, I decided to incorporate a little bit of illustration because I am. Uh, a lot of people here know me, I would think, and they know that I draw things. So you can incorporate drawings if you're comfortable with it right, right onto the address, the um, envelope. 
So whether it be a drawing of like, for example, I, I did paint a bird on that one envelope, I think I showed it on this one. And this is actually a sympathy card. So I just felt like the bird was nice. So, okay. So for this one, I'm just gonna start to draw in black ink. And this is, it's just like a little tacked on. Nope. With a tiny little like push bit. Can you see that? Samantha, someone yeah. was asking if all of the envelopes so far have been with the Derwent paint pens. And I think you're actually using the line makers, correct? Yes, right now I'm using the line makers and for the red one, I use the line makers. I'm gonna use the paint pens um, on the darker envelopes. I asked people to bring light colored envelopes just because I didn't know what people had. So, but if you do, dark colored envelopes, you are gonna need something light to write with and opaque. So the paint pens would work well for that. Yeah, Big, these, this one's silver, that, that one's gonna work really well on those. I also have, Molly, you sent me a bunch of these, these white um, ink tense pencils and they, are, they also work well. So I'm just gonna finish writing this. And this one, I might add a little paint to it just to make those illustrations look like little, you know, more like they're popping off, off the envelope. Everyone, I know you guys were asking if Samantha can zoom her camera in and she can't, it's, it's set up on a tripod over her head so that it can show why she's working, but she'll hold up the piece that she's creating every um, so now and then, so you can see a little bit better. Oh yeah, I'll hold it up right when I'm done this part. Can everyone see that? Okay. <laughs> so and this, so this for this one, I might I'm gonna add a little bit of paint, and I'm just using my Derwent um, intense paints.
just giving it a little bit of a yellow tint. I'm trying not to go over the um, words because this pen is not fully, fully waterproof. Part of it is. Molly, is that something you have to just sort of let dry long, a while longer? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, because we're in a rush, I'm, I can't be too patient with letting things dry fully. So <laughs> that's okay. All right, and then this one, maybe I'll do like a light gray. And then I can do a little bit of like a shadow. Sam, you make this look so easy. Oh. <laughs> I think we're all we're all in awe. <laughs> oh, you know, you do you do things enough, and it. So there's how that came out, and I, as you saw, I did that really quick, but it's still really cute. And then when we add the stamp. Um, one of these love stamps on. Okay, so I'm gonna move on because we're already halfway through the class. <laughs> There's so much I wanna do. Okay. So now I have a darker color envelope. This is actually stationary. I don't I don't buy too much of it, but this is Hey Sam, before we scoot on, yes. um, a couple of people are asking what you just used to draw I think kind of the outside of that box and I think you just used the line maker but then you went over it with um the water brush while it was still wet to kind of get that shadow correct yeah I just used I used I just used a, the the line maker mm -hmm. which is just yep. a permanent fine line pen yep they're really good this and I, I used um the o, the point two yep and then, and then I was just using these paints. Sorry, I, I should, and I'm sorry that they're so dirty, but I use them all the time. Um, but these paints, and I was just using a little bit of the yellow and the black with the Derwent water brushes, which are like the best water brushes I've ever, I've ever used. They're so good. And then Molly knows how much I love these paints. I use them all the time, so. They're kind of like a mix between watercolor and gouache. And um, I just, I love all the different things I can do with them. Okay. So someone, now, sorry, yep. someone else really quick just asked, I think for anyone that was asking if Sam was erasing. And so she, she sometimes will go over with pencil and then go over it with the pen and then go back and just erase the graphite pencil mark. If that's what you're seeing her doing. Yes. Yes. I was saying Sorry, hit my garbage. Um, I was saying earlier that if, if you think about the address part or the, the, the main address, I mean, that's, that's the like, that's your main feature here. So you, you really wanna spend some time planning that out and making sure that you don't run out of space and that it's properly in the, in the right position. So you think of it like a sketch, you know, just like you're drawing the address and having a pencil is perfect. So you can plan that out. And I, I do it all the time because, you know, you, you run out of room. Like I did this one freehand, but if I had planned it a little bit with the pencil, I probably could have then, what I'll do is I'll, I'll draw it with the pencil. And then if I run out of room, like see how that got a little tight. I know that when I go back over it with, with the pen, that that's going to happen. So it's not like you have to plan it perfectly. It just gives you something to go by, if that makes sense. Um, and then, yeah, you can erase it. I mean, you just have to make sure that your materials are the right materials and that you wait for ink to dry and things like that. So. And then Sam, someone else asked um, if the Derwent paint pan set, the big studio set that you showed, if those are the same things as the Derwent um, Inktense blocks, and they're actually not, those are more of a, a traditional, or not traditional, but they're more of a paint set. 
So just to kind of clarify that. And then someone yeah. asked if Derwent and Faber-Castell were the same thing and it's not. Derwent is a, is a completely different brand. So yes, yes. And, and if people are asking, can you use this or can you use that? Yes, you can use anything. I mean, I love Derwent. I'm here with Derwent. I have all their supplies and everything I need is right here. But you can use anything. I mean, you my you know you can use your kids crayons or your kids like Crayola markers. Like, <laughs> just have fun with it. You know, um, it's just really fun, and it's just you might have to experiment a little bit if the you know one good good idea like little tips is like if you're using really saturated inky markers like Copic markers or something, you might not want to have the um, card inside the envelope because it will might bleed through, things like that. Like you just, it's trial and error. So once you get used to your materials, it's kind of like doing anything else, like what you would do in your sketchbook or in your, you know, your, your, your art making practice. So, um, okay. So what I'm gonna do here is I have going to the next address. Okay, I'm gonna use, do this one. And I, yeah, I might, I might, I might do this one in pencil too. So I'm just writing. You can't see anything right now. I know you can, and I apologize. Um, but if you, you see my, the motion and maybe you heard the scratching, I'm just writing. I'm gonna probably have to go over this a few times, but I'm gonna get the first. So that's a very light first, first, um, first pass. And luckily that is drying quickly so I can erase my pencil. Hey, Samantha, a couple of people yep. are asking about if you were gonna use the ink tents um, pencils because they had bought them for the class. And I think you're oh. hoping to get to them at some point, correct? Yeah, I have them right here. And well, the other thing I, I wanted to mention too is if anyone goes back, Samantha did an entire class with those pencils back in January on National Handwriting Day actually. And she showed how to use your own handwriting um, so that's a complete hour deep dive using the pencils and the paint pens and how to yeah. use your own natural handwriting. So you can definitely go check that out too. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, um, the, the one thing that I wanted to do was show you things like this. So I have to go over this. So the paint pens take, take a little, like, you know, you just have to, um, the silver is not going to work on there. So I'm, I'm sort of experimenting as I go as well. I have a white ink tense pencil here. Um, and just seeing what I can do. So this, I, I mentioned to Molly that this might happen with a dark, with a dark piece of paper. There is one tool I have here that's this stuff. It's called 
um, Dr. P.H. Martin's bleed proof white, and it's super opaque white that you can use to paint. Um, and that is what I did this envelope with. This one. So you can see how that looks. And I just painted those letters. So I'm, go I'm going over this a little bit with this white pen, but I think I want to show you like a little bit of that fun paint splatter too. These are fine line paint pens. So that's why I have to go over it a few times. And I don't want to spend too much time drawing these letters when I can also show you when you have with the colored pencils, that would be, I, I know, I know what I'll do next. So we can use those colored pencils for the paints. Almost done, okay. And I can bring it up to the screen, although I do feel like this needs something more, so the paint splatter would be fun. Okay, let me just quickly do this. So, you know, we, we have these water brush, I have this water brush, right? And you, you squeeze the, um, the water out, and I'm using the white, which I love. It's not perfect. It's not super opaque. It's a, it's it's like just like I said before. These paints are like a cross between watercolor and gouache. So, but if you get the right consistency, and then you just sort of pull, put enough water in there, like this is kind of like a little pool of water. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little pool of water in there that I squeezed out of the brush, and then I'm just going to tap. And tap with the other hand. <laughs> Can everyone see that? Sometimes it takes, you don't want to go too crazy with it because then you'll cover up what you're you know, in this case, I'm going to cover up my address, but I can also add darker color to that so that I make sure that it's re readable. So that's a fun little, just a fun thing to do. Um, that really is once you get, you know, you, you might want to do the, the paint splashes before you do the address and different colors, and then you'll know how to do the address, really whatever order you want to go in. Um, I can add a purple dark color to this so that make to make sure that those letters are readable. But I do want to, I think what I'll do now is I'm going to go on to showing you when you have light colored envelopes. Here's, here's one. I've got this light colored envelope. And I'm going to show you, we can do this with the Derwent Inktense pencils or with the paints. So does anybody, do people have a preference? Should I, should I work with the pencils? Does it matter? And in the end, it's going to have the same kind of the same result. Everyone okay. saying the pencils. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's go to the pencils. Perfect. Okay. And then someone asked about the water brush too. That's a Derwent push button water brush. Michaels is actually getting ready to carry that, but they do not have it in stock quite yet. But um, it's a it's a nice feature with the push button uh, part there that controls the flow of the water. Okay. 
Great. Yeah, they're so they're so good. They once you get the hang of them, they're because a lot of water brushes they'll spill out too much water, they'll leak, they'll you know they get really finicky. But these are consistently really really good, and the button works and it holds because it's they have this sort of fat barrel. It holds more water, so you can go longer. They're just really good for on the go, and because ink tents is um, ink and you know, it sort of dies into the paper and like same with the pencils, it's sort of like, yeah, it's like, a, it's, it's an ink. <laughs> I don't know, it's not, they're not watercolors. I don't, I tend to just use these brushes with them because I don't know if they would like stain my other brushes or if it, and, and also I just love the convenience of it. They just, you know, and the, the palette also comes with a water brush, so. But as you can see, this tip is, is pretty stained. It doesn't come off on the paper at all, but the bristles have been stained. So I just tend to stick with it. I just use them with the, they kind of go together in my mind. Um, okay, so I'm gonna just use light colors and we can just, we can just do like a fun, a fun background pattern. Just gonna do waves. You should stick with light colors though, that so that when you when you add your address on the top, because I'm gonna I'm gonna actually add water to this. I'm going to leave an area here empty for the address for now. I'll show you why. So I went pretty light with those. And now look what happens, it's so nice. I'm just adding water. That's the beauty, like the best part of these ink tense pencils. It's just so fun. Like magic. Okay, now I'm gonna start with the address. Which address will I use now? Sam, someone was asking if you're cleaning off your brush as you're like coming off camera. And I think you're, you might just be blotting it on something. Oh yeah, yes. I always have, <laughs> look how dirty they are. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite, they're my favorite. These, uh, they're like the paper towels that you get at a restaurant. I tell people that all the time. Now we're not going to restaurants, but I have a collection of them and 
they're so good and that one will last me forever. Um, so that's all I'm doing. It's just a paper towel. You could just have a paper towel or some people, if they don't want to use, you know, for environmental reasons or whatever, I get it. You can use an old t-shirt. You can, yeah, I just blot it on something soft so that, okay, this one is. I'm just eyeballing this, so, but remember, if you're not confident doing that, you can always use that pencil to plan. You can do a light pencil and then just go over it with the colored pencils. I have a bunch of addresses here. I don't want to get them wrong. I'm going to mix two of them together or something. Okay. So the great thing is with these pencils, you can use them just as colored pencils and not add water, or you can add the water. And so for the address, I'm not going to add the water because I just, you know, it would just not make it, it might make it illegible and I don't want that to happen. So. Sam, people are asking if you get the ink tents wet in the mail, if it's going to smudge and do you need to put any kind of fixative over it? And from my experience with the ink tents, once they dry, they're permanent. They're not going to bleed. Yeah, I wouldn't think, I don't yeah. think you have to worry about that. Oh my gosh, I hope I'm not getting this wrong. I look, this is where <laughs> suddenly I'm like, am I dyslexic? <laughs> There's too many numbers and letters. And, uh, yeah, and just to, just to clarify with, what ink tense does and why it's different than all other watercolor pencils is yes, it's water soluble initially, but once that dries, it's completely permanent. So you cannot rewet it. So that's yeah. the nice thing is that that vibrancy is going to stay and it is not going to rewet. And also it, the paper I'm using, this is actually a really nice envelope. But if you have cheap envelopes and you're adding water to basically when I'm, it's obvious like these aren't, your envelopes aren't necessarily gonna be really nice watercolor paper. So you just have to, um, again, like trial and error, you might mess up a few. So have a bunch of things around. If you're getting cards that are expensive that you spent money on and you only have a set amount of envelopes, you don't wanna play around with it, just do another technique that won't mess it up. This is still drying, so there's a, do you, there's like a, a wave in the paper, but I assume once it fully dries, that might even out and it might not, but whatever, it's mail. I mean, it'll still be fun. These aren't, you know, I mean, some people might frame your envelopes if they want, but they're not, it's not really that kind of art, if you want to call it. But yeah, it's art. It's definitely art, right? Yeah, but you don't have to, I don't know. It's it's sort of it should be low pressure, you know, it's fun. And in the end, the envelope, seeing an envelope in your mailbox that's not a bill, these days is so rare. You know, people are just we don't we don't communicate this way as much anymore. So what and whatever you do, people are gonna be happy <laughs> to get something in the mail that's that's not a bill. Or junk. So I might just leave that like that. I don't know. It's kind of fun. Maybe I can add some paint at the bottom that would be like a bigger wash. If anybody has questions, what time is it? Oh, we're almost. If anyone has questions, um, I can do one more. I can. I'm just adding little bit to the bottom of this. So 
So the one takeaway is I want everyone to, there, there are so many options. I mean, if you, I'm sure if you Google like, you know, I don't know, mail art, you're gonna see so much. I do my own thing, I always have. And, you know, my friend Rhea influences me because I physically get her stuff in the mail and I love it. Um, and a few of my other friends, but I, I don't really look around, but I know there's so much inspiration out there. So if anybody has any questions on like the mail part of it, I, I can try and answer. On the art making part of it, I just think, I just want to encourage that you just have fun and play around. Think about how you can recycle things. Think about what can become a letter. Um, I have, I'm just gonna share this now. Just so you see how, what, what goes on with me. I save everything. So I have all these different things that I write letters on that I find at stores. This, these are little library cards that I'm sure were either discontinued or somebody just re remade them or repurposed them. Um, these are those little like sticker things from when my kids were little. And sometimes I'll just throw it in. I mean, the, I don't know what the recipient's gonna do with it, but, and just old ephemera, anything I find anywhere. I have more of these boxes. Um, I had a pad by an artist that I really like and I just tore the pages out. Cause you know, how nice is that to write a letter on? So nice. Um, I save old cards. I have so much stuff that I just, I don't, and half of it I didn't even buy. I just, I just found. So, or we, or we, or I bought it for one reason and have, and I'm repurposing it for, for mail, if that makes sense. So yeah, and <laughs> sometimes it gets too much that my box is so full, I can't, I can't close it. I have to send more mail. This is my month, I'll send more mail. I have a collage box for my next class with Michaels and we're gonna do a collage project. So that would be really fun. I don't remember the date, but it's in May. Um, but I, these are just papers that I found from everywhere. I just don't, I don't throw things out. These are bags from shops to torn out things from magazines to I have just coffee cups, everything. And I just find this is a really fun thing to have just so you can, think, can dig through it and just get, get creative thinking about what you can put on your envelopes, what you can make envelopes out of. Um, yeah, I don't know if anybody, I mean, I can, I, are we, what should, what do, what do you think, Bobby? Are we so running out of time? Yeah, you're right at the end of the time, but it's up to you. <laughs> so, well, I don't know how many people do we have. We still, have, oh, we still, oh my gosh, there are a lot of people here. Okay, um, I can do another one. We can, if anybody has questions, now's a great time to ask. This, this I just wanted to. <laughs> what's that? I said you're getting lots of compliments. So oh, everyone's thank very you. Appreciative. Oh, good. Yeah, I know this was a lot. And I, you know, we could go into the actual project of each envelope in fuller depth and talk about all the different ways that you can make mail to this kind of thing, where, you know, this is what calligraphers use, I'm sure. This is a, I don't know if anybody missed that, but this is just a piece of paper inside my envelope with lines so that your address is straight. So there's tricks like that that you can you can do um, you can use and, and incorporate into your letter writing practice world. <laughs> um, stay, you know I encourage supporting the U.S. Post actually you can post all over the world right now I'm sure, and I encourage you know that idea of upcycling and rethinking what you can use for mail, so. Um, Samantha, I just wanted to clarify just a couple things that are coming through here in chat. People were asking you to do some doodles and I think you cover 
like more of your sketching and drawing in your books, which I did post the link to your books and you've got a new book coming out actually in June, right? Yes, and I just got my first advanced copy of it. Um, and I, I mean, <laughs> and, and within Draw Your World, the new book, I, there's probably, should I come to the main camera now? Maybe I should. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. In, in my new book, there's probably like 20 lessons right in there that I could do classes on. And so I'm excited about what that will open up and opportunities that will open up for me to share with you um, live in these class situations or in online classes that we can I can have permanently to, um, I, I also offer one-on-one -on -one classes. So, and that, that info is just on my website. And anything that I have going on is, is gonna be on that website, on my website under classes. So um, th yeah, this is just one thing I never even thought I would do a class on, but it's so much fun. And I, I don't know, um, I, I, I do teach how to, I do teach about drawing techniques. I don't like to teach people step-by-step step how to draw something because I think everybody should come to that solution on their own, but it's more the idea of how to see things, the idea of learning perspective, learning light and shading, learning, you know, all the different sort of tools you need so that you can then create your own drawings. Um, so I don't know if that's what people were wanting, but step-by-step, step, like how to draw a dog, you're, you won't get that from me. <laughs> so if that makes sense. No, I think that's perfect, Sam. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm just, yeah. Draw, draw your world is my new book. Yes. Draw your, should I, I'll, I'll hold it up real quick while we're, while we still have people here. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. You're all the first people to see it. The first people. <laughs> it's very excited. So this is my book, Draw Your Day. It's been out for like two and a half years. And this is Draw Your World. So it's a little bigger. Yay. <laughs> so it's super exciting, there's the back. I won't share too much of it, but this is, um, this is my new book. It's, there's a lot in there, I'm really excited. And um, yeah, it's not, it comes out June 22nd. So, but if, if anybody doesn't know, if you pre-order it, um, I've got a whole pre-order campaign right now. And Derwin is part of that. Um, so you, there's like four different things you can win. Um, everybody will get an, a supplement chapter about sort of finding inspiration when you're stuck inside, like we have been. Um, I wrote the book pretty much all um, before COVID. So, um, there's, there's a lot more I can share about being stuck inside. So I'm going to add, I'm going to send that to everybody who pre-orders. Everyone will get a, um, a print, a downloadable print. And then there are four prizes and there's these like amazing art supply bundles that Derwent um, is a part of. And then there's also an opportunity to win a workshop with me um, for up to 10 people. So for the winner plus 10 other friends. So um, so make sure you enter that and it's all the details are on my website. So that's it. Thank you, Sam. That was a yeah. wonderful hour. We really appreciate it. And you're getting all kinds of great comments, like wonderful, super inspiring. And thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, good. I'm glad. And I'm glad, you know, you, you know, it's just a different thing. So I, I don't know. Um, you know, it's not something I've, I've ever taught before, but if anybody wants to write letters and share what they've done, just send to me by direct message on Instagram. I'd love to see what you did. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. And it, yeah, again, and, and if you have any questions, I, I would love to see what you all said. I, I hope I can see the transcript of all the comments. I don't know if, if that's possible, but that would be fun to see. So yeah, I'll download a text file, Sam, and send it to you. 
Oh, good. I, yeah, because then it's it's so nice. I didn't see anything that people were saying. So please do. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Have a great night or morning or day. I think most people it's nighttime. So have a good one.